Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first of a couple of videos where we're going to build out this frame here with some of the parts on the desk. Now this is Quadcopter Building Series 6 and if you are interested and you have never built a quad before then we have a number of series on the channel Quadcopter Building for Beginners and in there we go through things in far more detail. So if you're interested in building and you haven't built a quadcopter before then have a look at those as a start of a 10 because this build we're going to go through at a reasonable pace. Now we've already looked at all the things on the table in the earlier videos in this quadcopter build series 6 but I think it's worthwhile before we get into the meat building this thing just quickly covering what we're going to use. First thing is the Flynoceros ether frame. Uh, this is a beautiful little frame. I'm really looking forward to putting this together. I'm not exactly sure that's the cage I'm going to end up using because I need to figure out what FPV camera bits and bobs we're going to put in here but that will be in the next video. This video is more going to be around getting all of the basic power pieces in place. Now, the motors that I'm going to be using, and what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below, so all these pieces you can go and find if you're interested in. These are from Foxier, and these are 2206, 2700 kV motors. And I've been interested to try these out because they actually look really nice. They feel great. Uh, the bearings and everything feel really good. The air gap is fantastic on them. And the idea with this is that these are going to go out on the arms. Now, the prop and motor combo that you're going to use on your quadcopter is kind of going to dictate what the rest of the pieces are going to have to be. Now, this motor is actually long enough that if I really had to, I could use the 4-in-1 ESC setup from Holobro. The challenge that I've got is if I just show you the specs for this motor, if we look at this with the kind of props that I'm expecting to be using, on a 4S battery, this is going to be pulling the best part of 40 amps. The challenge that I have is if we look at the two different options that I have here, we have the 4-in-1 ESC, which is only going up to 30 amps, and we have the Kakute F4 all-in-one V2 with the BL Heli 32 35 amp ESCs. Now, although it says 35 amps, these things will burst up to 40 amps. So these are going to be a better fit for these motors. So that's what I'm going to end up using. So that will go in the bin for another build. So let's open this up and just test and see how everything is going to fit onto this frame before we start snipping any wires or warming up the soldering iron. So inside here, if I just take the top piece off, we have the wires to connect up the ESCs, the separate ESCs and the signal cables. That's really nice from Hollybro, so thank you for that. That saves me having to cut other pieces up. Uh, we have the flight controller all in one itself. And uh, the way we have to install that, there's a little arrow there at the front that's going to have to point to the front of the quad. So that's going to sit inside. Now we have standoffs as part of the kit. So I might test fit that because that's where we're going to end up at the end of the video. The four ESCs that come apart of the kit, very pretty. No heat shrink, but I am going to put heat shrink around them because these are going to have to go out on the arms. And then the motors are going to have to go like that. And I'll probably try and put the ESCs closer into the arms like that. So now I've got a rough idea how everything's going to work. What I'm going to do is take the frame apart, take the arms off, and I'm going to solder the motors onto the ESCs. And then on the other end, I'm going to solder the power wires and the three connectors for this. Now, although this has three connectors on these little ESCs, they don't provide the five volts. So the reason that those are there is these little ESCs actually have telemetry on them. So that's one of the things that we'll do when we get to the beta flight setup, we'll set up telemetry. And by the side of each of the outputs, so we're going to have to solder on the power wires here from the battery, and then there's the power outputs in each corner for each ESC. And then the two pads by the side, one of them is for the signal cable that's going to tell the ESC how much power to send. And the other one is telemetry. Now, I haven't used ESCs with telemetry 
with beta flight yet so I'm fascinated to see how well that's going to work so by the end of this video what we'll have done would be connected all the main power pieces we'll have connected up the signals and the telemetry to this and we'll have also connected up the wire that we're going to need to plug in the receiver and then we'll be in a good place for the next video where we can put the FPV stuff in quickly go through the beta flight settings and then take it out and fly so let me pause the video here let me just go away screw these motors into the arms cut them off and solder them now hopefully I've got some I'd like to use clear heat shrink on this only because this has quite a few little LEDs on it and I'd quite like to see what the LEDs are doing when they're running so let me just start putting this all together and I'll come back and I'll show you where I've got to so to put the arms together I used the standard way of doing things and I first of all tinned the speed controller for all the connections that I was going to use soldered on the power wires and the signal wires because on these ESCs as just mentioned there's not only the PWM or signal and ground wires there's also a telemetry connection as well that we're going to have to make onto the flight controller then it was a case of making off all of the different soldered connections taking my time using a good soldering iron and some decent quality solder to give me a half decent job and then finally covering each of the ESCs in some heat shrink to protect it but nice thin heat shrink so that it also to allow the heat to be dissipated on the arms as well then it was a case of just adding each of them one by one and using the first arm that i put together that i was happy with as the template for all the others so that they all go together now one of the things i was noticing as i was putting this frame together was that the cage that i initially installed which had the blue spacers seemed a little bit big because i want to use this little Foxier camera to go with the Foxier motors and unfortunately the cage I'm looking at is a little bit too wide so I swapped the 30 millimeter cage which is for the big cameras for the 25 millimeter cage which has these kind of wacky purple standoffs instead and this shows what a really cool frame this is because all I had to do was take off the four bolts and then I could remove the bottom plate pop out the plastic spacers pop in the new spacers and then do the bottom bolt up and then it's all ready to install the camera on the top. The bolts that came with the motors, because the carbon fiber is so blooming thick on this Fly Nostra Theta, I tried to use the bolts that came with them, but unfortunately they were fractionally too short. They're beautiful bolts, but I ended up actually pulling ones out of the kit from old Emacs motors that were a little a bit longer that actually went all the way through the bottom supports of the motors with an extra one or two millimeters to spare well out the way of the windings but I just didn't want to rely on just two or three threads holding the motors on with the way I'm going to fly this once all the arms were put together and the cage had been changed on the inside then it was time for me to actually make off the connections from the ESC onto the flight controller itself. Now the manual for the Hollybro stuff is pretty good. It's a lot better than some others I could mention and it does show where to connect all the pieces. Now there are actually four or five different connections for each ESC on the corners so you are going to have to be very good at soldering and have a really decent soldering iron. There are the two power connections that's pretty obvious they're the ones we've already looked at, at the beginning of the video but then there are an additional two connections one for that signal and one for the telemetry pin as well so on mine I've connected all of the wires up I've also taken the step of connecting the ground pin for the signals to a ground connection on the flight control itself I just piggybacked it on the ground connection for the battery now I'm not entirely sure that that's necessary but I'm just doing it for a belt and braces approach. And by doing that, hopefully now we should have power to the ESCs and we should also have our signals connected to both run the ESCs and also to get the telemetry back in. And the other pro tip is if you ever have a LiPo battery that's come to the end of its life and you're getting rid of it, then obviously discharge it and take precautions before passing it into whatever recycling center you're going to use but I always clip off the main power lead and that gives you some nice silicone covered wire for little runs like this. Final step I did after doing all of the soldering of the power system was to very quickly pop an ohmmeter onto the output 
and just make sure there was no dead shorts. And luckily on this one there isn't. So I haven't completely messed up the power wiring. We'll find out in the next video if I've done the same with the signals. So now that's all done, we are pretty close to the end of this video. There's only one more thing I might do, and that, before we come into the next video, is to install the cable for the receiver. Now, all the connections are down here. Uh, here's the quick slide showing you how to connect it. The manual for these Hollybrow Frank controllers is pretty good. Unfortunately, they don't show you how to connect the VTX. So I've had to figure that out, and we'll cover that in the next video. But let me just show you the VTX will be fitting. So it's one of these fellas. So this is um, Atlatl HV. We've looked at it loads on the channel already. I'm a big fan of these. It's also uh, smart, so we can control the video bits and pieces from Betaflight itself. And the way this is going to work, the only thing I need to figure out when we come back is how I'm going to mount this, because I'd like it imagine that's going to go come through the back I think it's going to end up I'll just pop that on there to give you an idea it's probably going to end up having to go on top of the flight controller kind of like that it's a little bit fiddly because I haven't got any screws and anything but I think that is probably the way that it'll work so join me next time. We'll put on the video pieces. Uh, we'll install the Atlatl FPV transmitter. We'll pop the camera into the frame and wire all those pieces up. And then pop it into beta flight, do the bits of configuration, and take it out and fly. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.